Good morning, everyone. So glad you could join us this Sunday morning. Our subject today is Christian Science, and we are welcoming you welcoming you to our roundtable discussion, recording from the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. And we will begin with our morning prayer. I'm reading from pages 454 of Science and Health, 147 and 187 of Miscellany. Love is enthroned that evil or matter has neither intelligence nor power is the doctrine of absolute Christian science. And this is the great truth which strips all disguise from error. Let the Bible and the Christian science textbook preach the gospel which heals the sick and enlightens the people's sense of Christian science. This ministry reaching the physical, moral, and spiritual needs of humanity will in the name of Almighty God speak the truth that today, as in olden time, is found able to heal both sin and disease. May the grace and love of God be and abide with you all. Mary Baker Eddy. Thank you. Beautiful. All right, and Karen today will read the watching point. Watch number 330. <clears throat> Watch that you hold in mind the following relationship between God, our leader, and the cause of Christian science. The cause may be considered as a, as a body of which God is the head and Mrs. Eddie the heart, as she once said to Calvin Fry. When Mrs. Eddie said, Quote, follow me only as I follow Christ, unquote. She wanted us to believe that she was, <clears throat> she was wrong if God said she was wrong, but he never did. Pending the time when we would be able to go directly to God, she wanted us to listen to her as the voice of God and to follow her without question. If God is the head, we should consider him to be the source of all power and intelligence. If Mrs. Eddy was the heart, then her act of demonstration was the application, circulation, and execution of all that she received from God, his healing and guiding power. Through this ceaseless and loving endeavor, strength was brought to the very to the weary and health to the suffering sick. This love which she demonstrated continues to beat for all. Being God's love, it can never die. True <clears throat> true loyalty <clears throat> excuse me. True loyalty includes loyalty to God, <clears throat> to our leader and the cause. History shows that whenever a student turned away from one of this triad, he ended by becoming faithless to the other two. It's a good way to begin our subject on Christian science. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Any comments? <clears throat> but that last paragraph is the alertness to duty. Thank you. It definitely um, is. <laughs> I mean, I, and I just, I, to turn away from one of this triad, he ended, become, ended by becoming faithless to the other two. I thought, whoa. <laughs> it's, uh, I have to make sure that I am not disloyal to God in any way or to Mrs. Eddie or to the cause. It, it just brought it, really um, made it very important. Not that it wasn't important, important to me before, but that really, that really um, made it very important. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, and it shows the completeness and the infinitude of the universe that we live in, doesn't it? <clears throat> There's no separation yeah. between us and the cause of Christian science, mm -hmm. between us and God. And therefore, there can be no separation between us and Mrs. Eddy mm -hmm. or her demonstration. Trying to separate the cause from the leader. Um, 
I, I couldn't help but think again of that, what the uh, tour guide at Chestnut Hill told us about um, there were a few people that were thinking that um, in Mrs. Eddie's house that thought that the cause and Mrs. Eddie were two separate things. And Calvin Fry told them that they're the same thing. And what's good for the cause is good for Mrs. Eddie. What's good for Mrs. Eddie is good for the cause. And that really impressed me. Thank you very much. It's so, so very important. This was the beginning of the human mind entering. Maybe not the beginning. It probably had been going yeah, on. Yeah, been going on. Yeah. Ever since. Ever since. And I am so grateful to Carpenter, who makes it very, very clear, um, this triad of, uh, and he talks about the Bible, science, and health, but then we need to see how this truth is demonstrated. And that is a, the example of Mrs. Eddy. Of course, also Christ Jesus. But in, in the Carpenter books, he lays it out how she was demonstrating and living this science. So we can do the same. It is essential. That's why it is criminal for these books to have been suppressed. The Carpenter books, as well as others. Yeah. That's well, if all. you understand, oh, excuse me. if you understand when she says she wanted us to listen to her as the voice of God, you know, if you really get that, then anything she says or wrote is God speaking and must be obeyed if you want to demonstrate the science. Yes. Yes, and that is why the manual has to be obeyed. That is why her de deed of trust for the publishing society needed to be obeyed. And for the board of directors to violate both of those shows that they are unfaithful to the cause of Christian science. And that is why that organization is failing. It's not a judgment call, it's just a fact. It can't succeed because it has been faithless to the cause of Christian science. And if we don't learn that lesson, we will also fall into the same trap. We are all under that discipline. Yes, I had a dear someone, a dear person from Quebec write me a while ago saying he, you know, he saw so clearly what was going on. He thought we should do a whole YouTube about it, but I, I don't feel that's what we should do, but um, much has been written about it, including Andrew Hartzook's Christian Science After 1910. So, um, yes, and this, this uh, as Karen brought out, the alertness to duty in the manual, you see this aggressive mental suggestion that, that is out there right now talking to you, that is, that is intended to make you to forget or to neglect your duty to God, <clears throat> to your leader, and to mankind. And if you can see that clearly, you will say, the hell you say, that stupid voice, <laughs> whatever thing. I, I will go back to, I have been living with one cause and effect <clears throat> in miscellaneous writings, where it's a wonderful explanation of what Christian science is. And she says on tw page 22, Mrs. Eddy says, Christian science shows the impossibility of transmitting human ills or evil from one individual to another. That all true thoughts revolve in God's orbits. They come from God and return to him. And untruths belong not to his creation. Therefore, these are null and void. We know this for ourselves for our church, for our world. And then it, meaning Christian science, hath no peer, no competitor, for it dwelleth in him, besides whom there is none other. I've, I read that, I think, last week, but I'm going to keep reading it over and over, because this is the truth. We need to know this. And, and if we, we're faithful to the alertness to duty, we will not accept the aggressive mental suggestions and come down from the pinnacle. And I think, you know, it's helpful to me to remember that we're not dealing with another religion here. 
<laughs> this is not just another religion. This this is the science behind Christianity. This is the science that is the core of every so-called Christian religion. It, it is their basis. And uh, and this Christian science is unlike any other any other Christian religion, isn't it, or anything? And it is complete. Mrs. Eddy has said there might be truths in some of the other things, but there, it's fragments. This is the whole picture, all of it, and revealed to her by God. She was the woman in the apocalypse. Which, which is why we can study it for the rest of our lives. Yes, and <laughs> we do. Now, now that everybody else will get, that the right sense of Christian science will be gained by all mankind. Yes, and, and now is our time to be that example, be that calm, loving, truthful example. Um, Carrie, again, sent me some lovely articles, which I will mention a few this one about Mrs. Eddy called Recruit by X. It's from an August 85 issue of the journal. And it writes, a woman, God inspired, and this was 20 years ago, planted a thought in the minds of the people that will grow until it reaches all nations. Mm. Just, what, just what Florence said. <laughs> the tree of life will yet shelter the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She learned from our master's teaching and her constant communion with Christ. Lo, I am with you always. Was to her spiritualized sense of things a recognized fact. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, was to her the enduring substance of life. Her feet touched the mountains. Her understanding attained the heights we none of us yet have reached. Her reward will not be the praise of men, but the eternal glory of God. Who of us will help this woman? Who of us will stand shoulder to shoulder amid the musketry of error and guard the standard that she has planted? Be not afraid. The marching song is one of victory, more inspiring than the mar the Marseilles of France. I hope I said that right. And then it reaches heaven. Peace generally comes after the battle, but we have peace through it. Join our ranks, ye that are good and true. And sometimes they get broken, but it is only when the unworthy fall out and we gain strength by their departure. Now, there are a couple of things. Peace generally comes after the battle. The sword must be drawn. We can't be God is love. Everything's fine until we've earned that peace. And but we can have it through the battle and that we're marching through the battle now. So maintain your peace. And then we we know that this is true. The ranks sometimes get broken. And when people fall out, it's amazing. We do become stronger the air becomes clearer. If someone falls out, there's a reason. So we must never mourn that, but just keep keep ourselves, keep marching. I thought that was beautiful about Mrs. Eddy. And I have given this to some people, but I want to give it now. Um, in the lesson on page, well, it's, it's number five in Science and Health. <clears throat> Mrs. Eddy. For three years after my discovery, one, I sought the solution of this problem of mind healing. Two, I searched the scriptures. Three, and read little else. Four, I kept aloof from society. Five, and devoted time and energies to discovering a positive rule. <clears throat> I'll never forget when this so-called pandemic started whatever it was, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, Zary said we should spend all our time reading Science and Health and getting a deeper understanding of this truth. This, to me, were, were my battle orders this week. One, to seek the solution of the problem of mind healing. We all can 
dig deeper, can't we? Understand it more. This is only a strengthening time. Two, search the scriptures. And now we can modify that because now we have the scriptures and prose works and science and health, which we are to search and work with daily. Three, read little else. Four, keep aloof from society. Good idea right now. And finally, devote our time and our energies to discovering a positive rule. You know, some of us saw last night this beautiful, it was a beautiful DVD of Peter. Peter and the Last Supper. Peter and the Last Supper. And it showed the disciples, including Peter, sleeping, right? Mm-hmm. At Gethsemane. And they were mortified, Peter particularly. But Mrs. Eddy has said, if they had only watched, we might have been in the millennium now. If they had only watched after Mrs. Eddy passed, we might be in the millennium now. This is our opportunity. And it's why I, I listened to that story about Mary and the small group of metaphysical thinkers that brought the Christ truth. It doesn't matter how many it matters our devotion to it. So take that as a battle cry. What Mrs. Eddy did, we do now, devoting our time and energy to this. It can't help but bring about a tremendous amount of good. Never doubt, because it is the power of God, and this is God's plan. It's not any human doing. So... I like that prayer that you were reading before about um, we today are enough to bring in the millennium. Yes, I used to read that every, 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 if we are of one mind. If we are of one mind. And this is why we do the roundtables every week. This is the clearing of our thought. This is to make sure we are, we are an army battle cry. We're not getting into the human material sense of things but we keep our thoughts pure so this work can be done in unity as best we can and remember the life that you live may be the only sermon that some people ever hear can i read aloof because i <clears throat> looked that up okay. because it, you get that sense like it's kind of a self-righteous sense uh, yeah. i had a wrong sense of it and so really it says at a distance, this is uh, Webster's 1828, but within view, and then to, it says in a figure sense, declining to take any share, uh, circ uh, implying circumspection, keeping at a distance from the point or matter in debate. I thought that was interesting. Very good. Yes. Very helpful. Yeah. It's not It's not a matter of not caring. We care deeply. We care so deeply that we're willing to do this right. and not go around, um, you know, with what I feel now is kind of meaningless activities. This is the most important thing. It also, this to me, brings the greatest joy in the world. Nothing compares to this. Nothing compares to this. All the traveling, all the stuff people do, nothing this is the greatest joy, it gives you the greatest joy, the greatest peace. That doesn't mean everyone's different. People can do what they feel they should be doing. But, um, yes, I love that statement in Science and Health. Now, dear Louise brought out a very interesting point, and Gary will read that on the forum this week. This is from the forum from Louise. Quote, quote, the two largest words in the vocabulary of thought are Christian and science. The former is the highest style of man. The latter reveals and interprets God and man. It aggregates, amplifies, unfolds, and expresses the all God. The life of Christ is the predicate and postulate of all that I teach. And there is but one standard statement, one rule, and one principle for all scientific truth. End quote. And that was from No and Yes. <clears throat> From an article entitled Christian Science, Not Just a Name, by Andrew Kidd on the uh, Plainfield website, Cornerstone, published in May of 2013, the author states, 
The Supreme Court of New Jersey rejected the argument on the basis that Christian science is far more than a brand name. It is worth considering why the term needs to be appreciated and never relegated to just being a name. Quote, like our nation, Christian science has its declaration of independence. God has endowed man with inalienable rights, among which are self-government, reason, and conscience. Man is properly self-governed only when he is guided rightly and governed by his maker, divine truth and love, end quote. And that's from Science and Health. Can it be any clearer? When using the term Christian science, the student needs to take off his sandals, shoes, slippers, for he is walking on holy ground. Is it any wonder why the board of directors fought so hard to try to retain control over these two largest words in the vocabulary of thought? What a tremendous debt of gratitude is due for the steadfast, immovable perseverance of the Plainfield Church to carry the fight through to a victorious end back in the 1970s and 80s. Their victory, in which they won the right to use the name Christian Science, was truly historic. Parenthesis, History of Our Independence on the Plainfield website. End quote. Want to comment on it? Well, it's great that she sees the historic importance of our being ejected from the from the Boston organization through that lawsuit, because the 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 board of directors won their case in the lower court. And we appealed to the appellate court, and we won in the appellate court. So the Boston lawyers appealed to the Supreme Court of the state of New Jersey. And God bless our lawyer, a lovely Jewish litigator, <laughs> because he saw the cause. He saw it clearly, and he was moved by God to argue our case before the state Supreme Court. And the state Supreme Court um, decided in our favor that we had the right to use the, the name Christian Science. Boston argued that it was like a copyright, like Cheerios. Oh, or Kellogg's. Or Kellogg's, <laughs> or whatever, cornflakes, or whatever. <laughs> They said it was a it was a, a brand name that they owned. What kind of I mean, really? Where where could their heads be to say such a thing? Anyway, we won in the state Supreme Court of New Jersey, and uh, Boston at that point decided not to appeal to the Supreme Court of the United States. They had lost in New Jersey. They didn't want to lose in the entire United States. But our lawyer was ready to take it to the Supreme Court of the United States he would, and, and do it free because he so believed in this cause. We have to call him sometime. And Jim the, Schrager. Jim Schrager. And the person that wrote this in our history, Andrew Kidd, was a beloved member, a practitioner of our church for a long time. He decided to distance himself from church but anyway by any remote chance he's listening to this we would love to hear from him because we haven't in a long time and he did many many wonderful things for our church Inclu i just go oh, ahead sorry. i just wanted to say on page 76 of retrospection and introspection mrs eddie says christian science is not copyrighted <laughs> whoa <laughs> thank you my goodness nor would protection by copyright be requisite if mortals obeyed God's law of man right. So. Wow. Thank you. Wonderful. There we well, go. There we go. So, Louise, thank you for that. I appreciate that thought. I hadn't thought about that, but it, it's true. And those words are important. And thank goodness it's free for all mankind, as is her textbook. Thank God. If it was just limited to buying in a reading room and all the reading rooms are closing, I mean, it, it's hard not to think this is a 
overall conspiracy. It's a conspiracy of the human mind and the carnal mind. Reminds me about thought control and uh, I used to be taught about watch out for uh, books back in the 50s and 60s on beware of thought control. It's like that's what <clears throat> the boss of people wanted to do. Take, take mm-hmm. pull a name and everything. Right. Thank you. And they, well, they turned away from one of the triad, so they became faithless to the other two. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. And this, we're, we're not condemning anybody. We're just informing of what's gone on. Um, so, and, and we're this, grateful that we're yeah. independent. Thank God. And, and this explains things that uh, are not well understood in the manual, like the estoppel clauses. That, that was a tough one for a lot of people to swallow. Mm. But Christian science is bigger than an organization. Yes, mm. and it must That's, be free. Free to do its work, its job. That's why to restrict it is, is why, because you think people will misunderstand it? Well, it's the truth. Maybe there are those that will misunderstand it, but there'll be many more that do. <laughs> and they misunderstand it anyway. So what difference does it make? Um, <laughs> right in the cause, they misunderstand it. Yes, right in the cause. It's very misunderstood. Very, very misunderstood. It must be free. So, and... So, but we are grateful that we were set. Thank free. God. Thank God. All that happened. We're so grateful. We, we didn't seek it. It just happened. It, it happened came. to us. Yes, we didn't seek it. We didn't seek to be excommunicated. It happened. Okay, Lil, read the golden text for us. Heal me, O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Thank you. And dear Jasmine in Australia wrote that she was dwelling in the scriptural passage. Um, and she said she didn't pay a lot of attention to this truth two decades ago, being too eager to drive home mortal mind seeming advantages. But it sticks, sticks to me lot now like, like glue as a revelation. This is the sum of it. As spiritual awareness, Christ consciousness appears, material or personal sense disappears. All healing relies solely upon understanding that. And then every prophet that moved the world declares that the so-called mortal mind cannot be spiritualized. Instead, it must be put off and destroyed, Craig was saying. When the Christ appears as my consciousness, it dispels the so-called mortal mind. Thus, human thoughts, even ethical, good, generous, impassioned ones, are not spiritual. It's a very good point to understand, and thank you, Jasmine, for that, because we think, and I used to think this, that I had to spiritualize, become better, humanly better. Well, that- possible <laughs> it all must be put off all put off the old man for the new even the so-called good things it's still human Florence did you want to speak no I was just agreeing with that that you know otherwise it's like you're keeping a bit of you don't want to let all the human go you're keeping a bit of that and and adding the, the truth to it which doesn't work Kind of let it go. Description. <laughs> right. That's a great description. And yet, it, it, you know, it can we? Uh, is it is it that easy to throw off all of the human and take on all of the spirit all at once? Of course not. But that's the course. That's the whole point. <laughs> but it's a journey. Mm-hmm. It's an educational process. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. Right. Let's go gently from matter to spirit. Do not attempt to thwart the. The Amen. spiritual ultimate of all things. Thank you. Emerge gently yes. from matter to spirit. You don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> Go ahead, Florence. 
No, it's exactly it. It merged gently. And, you know, some people, maybe they leave something. Oh, I'm going to Plainfield. They'll heal me quickly. <laughs> no? <laughs> Do you still have the resentment? Do you still have the pride? Do you still have all of these things? I never, you know, there was nowhere where, you know, it's pointed out or from your learning the truth, you kind of feel uncomfortable with certain behaviors and certain characteristics and want to give them up so you they get here and they find oh i gotta wait all that time for all this you see so it's not a quick fix it's a process that we have to very much so true you know I, Mm-hmm. After a couple of days, then they think, "Well, gosh, this is, you know, what's the matter? Why is this working?" Um, yeah. Huh? Well, go ahead, Craig. Oh, and she says, "Do better health and and morals prove what your demonstration of Christian science has brought?" So, they, she gives you the roadmap what you'll see in your life to know whether you're going anywhere. <laughs> yes, she does, <laughs> and let unselfishness, goodness, yeah. mercy, justice. Love, the kingdom of heaven reign within us, and sin, disease, and death will diminish until they finally disappear. So tell me, are you doing all those first parts? Are you doing those first parts? <laughs> and people sometimes think they are. I thought good thoughts for two days now. Well, how about two <laughs> years or 20 years? Mm-hmm. And, and you should stop focusing on the physical healing. I, I, it's still, you know, I'll get this list of to do list of all the aches and pains and everything that people want healed. Well, that's that's not it. And but the whatever it is, the resentment or the fear or whatever negativity, whatever that is, just as unreal as any so-called physical manifestation. It's all unreal. And Mrs. Eddy makes that very clear in her article on body. It's not true. And when you cast it all out as an imposter, to renew it in your mind. Go ahead. No, that's what the Bible tells us about seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I never yeah. get to that point. I just, you know, seek you. Oh, yeah, of course I love God. That's it. <laughs> but uh, to give up all these other things, you know, entertaining the wrong thoughts about people and all that, and about yourself too, all of it is required. And it's patience, patiently doing it, uh, gratefully doing it, humbly doing it. Um, Thank you. And that's, it, it does go. The lies will go and so that you have a different way of facing them, even if they dare to come up. So. It's, it's a whole new way of life. And this is true Christian science healing. It's not faith cure. It's really what it is about. And this is what Mrs. Eddy says. She says you become, it, it heals everything. And think of it, if everyone had healings like this, how the world would be changed mm-hmm. instead of popping pills and vaccinations and everything. If we really focused on becoming Christ-like, Obeying the Sermon on the Mount and the Ten Commandments. What a wonderful world this would be. And what a wonderful world it is. When you are in obedience to these things. Yes. And anything else is the illusion. It's the illusion that this stuff is true and real and operating. And we have to see it like that. Jeremy, did you want to? Well, I was just thinking that, you know, it is a lot more than just physical healings that that I needed anyway. You know, the amount of testimonies I've given, I probably only had, I don't know, 10 (laughs) physical ones. Everything else has been like character, Yeah, I guess, you know. So a lot, if if you're looking for just physical, all that other stuff might be in the way and you have to go through it. You do. And if if that's all you want, go to the doctors. They'll cut you up. They'll numb you up. They'll give you pills. Just do that. If that's all you want, you don't want the change in character, then just go to the doctors. Just be honest about it, okay? And this is what he says in the lesson about how, you know, when she says, read this book from beginning to end, study, study it, ponder it. It will indeed be sweet at its first taste when it heals you but murmur not over truth if you find its digestion bitter 
So, yeah, yes. you have to keep going deeper. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. We're going to go. Carrie sent a beautiful article, Prophecies of Science and Health in the Scriptures, about that. It's too long for the Liberator. Carol can probably cut it down, but you could put the whole thing on the website. Okay. Um, anyway, she go. It goes into that, and it was written in 1890. And Jeremy, did you want to comment on Naaman? Oh. Yeah, I just was, we've had this in lessons a few times. It was the first time I really looked at it as far as, um, you know, how important it is to come come to the church, come to the cause, come to the Christ thought, and not have your own sense of identity get in the way of your healing, which a lot of, a lot of people do. I, I was actually, I don't know, I was, I was just was thinking, too, about how, I was really in such a super low place. I actually remember saying a few days before I came here, like, all right, father, I'm not a designer. I'm not, I'm not really anything. I don't, I don't know what I am, but if there's a way forward, let me know. And then I was brought here and it seems to be the kind of the place that you need to be. So <laughs> not that I haven't had to get past things since then, but yeah, I was just really, really grateful for that and grateful for how, you know, name and servants, they could have just said nothing. They could have just thought, you know, this guy has me as a servant. I'm not going to help him, but they didn't do that. How wonderful that is for him and for us, too, to see that, you know, do, do whatever is required, big or small, just do it. Have that humility. That's a beautiful story. Um, you know, there's that story, it might be in Aesop's fables, but I think Carpenter talks about it too, the lion that was caught in this huge net and couldn't get out. And he had to rely on a, what? Mouth. A mouth. A mouth. Yeah. A mouth. Chew the, chew the net. Chew the rope. <laughs> and and Mrs. Mrs. Um, Eddie was always very humble that way. You know, that's why she had those students working for her. She never thought she was so grandiose that she wouldn't ask for help when she thought she needed it. We must all have that humility like she did. And this is why I'm sure Jesus referenced we have to be like little children to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's their humility. They don't have any preconceived notions about how great they are. And the purity and innocence too. Kind of. Yeah, and their receptiveness, mm -hmm. you know. Now, this was a, a beautiful article that another one that Carrie sent called Absent Treatment. It's very interesting because it talks about Naaman, healing of Naaman, and the, um, the other two healings that are in the lesson were absent treatments. And I don't think the, the lesson writer knew that when she wrote this lesson. So it just shows how divinely inspired people are in our church and doing what they do. So this is written, Absent Treatment, from the 1910 issue of the journal by a John Rendell. There is abundant proof that a Christian science treatment reaches those who are absent and that its ministrations are efficacious in the destruction of error for a patient at a distance as for those who are present at the time they are treated. There are several instances in the scripture which may be taken as authority for absent treatment. For example, Naaman the Syrian, who when he went to the land of Israel to be healed of leprosy, expected to see Elisha the prophet. Elisha, however, knew that it was not necessary for him to see Naaman to lay his hands upon him or to have a material contact in any way. He knew the truth about man sufficiently to bring about the healing which Naaman desired. But it had to be in accordance with truth's methods and not with those of personal sense. Jesus healed both the centurion's servant and the nobleman's son by absent treatment and thus established a precedent which no Christian should ignore. History does not record any better or more scientific healing than these cases mentioned. The history of Christian science is replete with instances of the fact that it is a spirit that quickeneth, 
the flesh profiteth nothing. Mrs. Eddy's spiritual discoverer of the principle of Christian science has made it possible in this day and age for man to help his brother in a much larger degree than ever before because of the enlightened spiritual understanding which comes through a careful study of Christian, Christian science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, and because of the illumination of the scriptures resultant therefrom. Now, of course, this is something we all know and accept, and it's so important because you must never doubt your watch, your watches. Um, they go far and wide and reach the entire world. Those receptive. The lesson is over ocean and continent. Exactly. And now, I have something beautiful to read that Louise found, and it relates to yes, Citation Seven in Science and Health, page five fifty nine. The still small voice of scientific thought reaches over continent and ocean to the globe's remotest bound. And then. I was given a link to an interview with a Christian science practitioner from 12-22-2015, a Douglas Keith. In it, he gives an account of a reminiscence of the healing of a young woman. But we're not sure where else the source is. Maybe the Mary Baker Eddy Library. My Jeremy and Linda looked for this, as Louise has looked for it. It's a beautiful account, and I don't believe I've ever heard of it before, about Mrs. Eddy and this statement in Science and Health. Um, I didn't give it to Carrie, who usually can find a needle in a haystack, because she had a mission of mercy to go on this morning. But, but I know she listened to this, and she can see if she can find anything about the original source but anyway, Gary will read this beautiful account for us. All right. Um, a girl suffering from tuberculosis had gone from her home in England to Australia for her health. She was carried each day to the beach where she lay in the sun seeking some relief. She was not helped by the climate, but rather grew worse. One day while on the beach, she was suddenly healed completely, wholly. Shortly, she returned to England. Soon after, she discovered that some of her friends were interested in a new religion, Christian science. She took up the study of Christian science. Sometime later, a friend was preparing for a trip to Boston to attend a meeting and had been granted an appointment with Mrs. Eddy. The young woman wrote the time and place of her healing on a piece of paper and asked her friend to tell Mrs. Eddy of her experience. She had a strong feeling that Mrs. Eddy should be told of her healing. The friend demurred, but took the paper. At the close of her interview with Mrs. Eddy, she gave her the paper and mentioned the facts of the healing. Mrs. Eddy's face shone. She explained that at that particular time, she had put her finger on the globe as far as possible from herself and sent forth a healing prayer. She had touched the coast of Australia where the girl had been healed. Now she could put in the textbook the statement, quote, the still small voice of scientific thought reaches over continent and ocean to the globe's remotest bound, end quote. Mrs. Eddy had known the statement was true, but did not wish to include it until she had pr first proved it. <laughs> Wow. wow. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I'm worthy of crying. We're all crying. <laughs> oh my. Tears of joy. Tears of joy. What beautiful, what a beautiful thing. So I, I have never heard that. I don't know if anyone else has, but um uh, hope we, will, we will search. Oh. I mean, as 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 Louise said, this person was a practitioner. I mean, why would he lie or make up anything about that? He must have had some source. If we can find it, we will. And if not, well, I you feel in your heart it's true, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, we know she prayed for the world and felt the need. Every night. Yeah. Every night. Yeah. So, so yes. And, and. I know she she did like to prove everything she wrote. It had the clout that she had proved it, right? 
everything yeah. she wrote. Mm -hmm. So this this time we've been blessed with a time of quietude <laughs> where we can do this prayer and study, um, find out, devote all our time and energies to discover this positive rule. And uh, so... And now, because this is a little bit longer, and this was another beautiful article that I mentioned earlier, Prophecies of Science and Health in the Scriptures, from an 1890 issue of the journal. Um, I'll have Gary read it. It goes into, again, what was in Revelation and what it means to us as Christian scientists. And I want him to be able to read it slowly because it's, it's deep. And this is the one we'll put on the website and maybe Carol can condense it, perhaps. But it's a, it's a, it's deep, but it's so true. Okay. Okay. The prophet Isaiah herein pictures mortal, sensual thought in culmination of belief. It is the present moment, and is described more fully in Revelation, and also in the chapter of the Apocalypse of Science and Health. As, quote, when nearing its doom, the evil power becomes the great red dragon, swollen with sin, hoary, ripe for destruction, end quote. It swells with pride over triumphs of supposed intelligence, developments of sciences of matter, and inventions that make its own essence, electricity, more ad admirable and real to itself and seems to bring it nearer to the perfection of spirit. It is ignorant that, it glor that its glories are reflections of vain imaginings. It is blind and cannot see that spirit has encamped it against it and compassed it about, that its boastings are vain babblings. But to spiritual vision, the louder its seeming triumph the lower it is brought. The more it speaks from the earth, the nearer is its doom. Its intelligence is a familiar spirit, witchcraft or belief, and the seeming voice of triumph, a whispering from the ground. Now, isn't that what we're seeing right now? All of that yeah. is a perfect description of it. So don't be fooled. It's just a whispering from the ground. Okay, go ahead. To expounders of the Bible, buried in beliefs of reality, of matter, and evil, this vision is a sealed book. And isn't that true? The material can't see it. It's a sealed book. It's all mystery. How many of these expounders are now answering to the message of truth? Quote, I am not able, for it is sealed. End quote. To the learned in their own conceit, to the wise after this world, it will always be a sealed book. Through another strong angel, messenger, realization of principle, science and health is given. The vision of the whole is no longer a sealed book. The little book is open. When eaten, it is sweet in the mouth. Open vision of the whole brings relief from fears and pains. The mental horizon is enlarged and brightened. Beliefs of theology, medicine, and other superstitions of mortal mind cease. And the sense of life as God is sweet in the mouth. Progression finally uncovers action of mortal mind from the basis of sensual belief in matter, animal magnitude, as the enemy that must be met and mastered. Now, at last, all the names and forms under which the issue has been evaded, the scorner and those watching for iniquity, that have turned aside into emptiness and righteous are to be consumed and cut off. Beliefs of the false sense, vain knowledge of the world, have filled the belly, as Job says, with the east wind. 
the stirring up and replacing of these by consciousness of principle all make the belly better make bitter the belly but when the word of god more cutting than any two-edged knife and penetrating as far as a dividing asunder of soul and spirit material and spiritual sense shall have done its work rivers out of his belly shall flow of living water covers and defenses of personality must be thrown down and destroyed then it is seen that it is not as personalities that salvation from animal magnetism is being worked out that there is no i to be saved in the open book good and evil have become impersonal in consciousness of principle as all belief of personality ceases and humanity is in a large place in the open book jesus promise is realized quote where i withdraw thou canst not follow me now but thou shalt follow later end quote Isn't that beautiful <laughs> this is the process that we mustn't complain about <laughs> the glorious glorious time Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.